you can um, you can just bring this up with you. I don't know where the book is. She's going to bring that right there. So what David was talking about was his eulogy that he put up there. I don't have to bring it.
Spirit be with you all. As we are gathered here on this beautiful day to give thanks for the life of Ina, to commend her soul to Almighty God, and to seek God's comfort for all who mourn. So on this day, as we gather in this sacred place, as family and friends, as her pastor, as her son, and, and so many others are sharing in this wonderful service, let us with thanksgiving remember her life and her enjoyment of it. And as a people of Christian faith, let us come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Hear the words of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I am the resurrection and the life. Even in death, anyone who believes in me will live. Set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. Come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Therefore, none of us has life in oneself, and none of us become our own master when we die. For if we have life, we are alive in Christ. And if we die, we die in Christ. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. There's a lot of music in this service today. And let us unite our voices together in praise and thanksgiving as we sing in the blue hymnal number 362. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
you. And also with you. I know would not have thought that was loud enough. <laughs> Your response is, and also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, O God of grace and glory, we remember before you on this day, Ina, Besta. We thank you, Lord, for giving Ina to us as mother and grandmother and friend, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn, and yet give us faith to see that in death, the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call, O Lord, we are reunited with those and Ina who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite those as able to stand in body or spirit as we join our voices together in singing hymn number 400, All Creatures of Our God and King, Stanzas one through four.
reading of Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all of my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my most inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you, while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there may be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation. <coughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on their throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift. From the spring of the water of life, those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Thanks. As we remember all the faithful departed, let us join our voices together singing hymn number 287, For All the Saints, stanzas 1 through 4. I invite you to stand as able in body or spirit.
Please be seated. And as we come to a time of remembrance, funerals always have a way of forcing us to think what will be said about us on our last day. And so it is with um, just a great appreciation of my big brother David and our twin sisters, um, Rebecca and Betsy, uh, to give a reflection of Bess's life. Hello. Hello. Nice to see everybody here. I'm a little sung out. <laughs> huh. Okay. Oh, me auto Mariana. Okay. Ina Solvay Williamson. I love my mother. You could say I've known her my whole life. And I learned very early on that Ina was a terrible cook. Meals were often a misadventure, a bit like the poem, My Mother Made a Meatloaf by Jack Perlitsky. My mother made a meatloaf that provided much distress. She tried her best to serve it, but she met with no success. Her sharpest knife was powerless to cut a single slice and her efforts with a cleaver failed completely to suffice. She whacked it with a hammer, she smacked it with a brick, but she couldn't phase that meatloaf. It remained without a nick. Aside from meatloaf, one of her other favorite standouts was sole de choux, otherwise known as fried to death liver with onions. We were often controlled to eat with the tried and true. There's children starving in Africa. But mom crafted each burned batch of cookies or cake with too much salt instead of sugar, with heart and with love. Yes, she did occasionally get it right. Her chocolate wacky cake made from Grandma Olga's recipe was a classic. Ina had a pretty difficult life and she could be bitter. After her and dad's divorce, she made the difficult and consequential decision to move back to the farm in Grafton, North Dakota. I think a decision based on a mix of economic pressure, her parents' declining health, and perhaps a bit of revenge. Mom could hold a grudge, and this was something that would mark her in negative ways the rest of her days. Living in Dakota was hard, and I know she suffered the burdens of loneliness and struggling to provide for five children. During this time, even though there was often conflict in our home, I never doubted she loved us and understood how she persevered for us. Mom could also be adventurous and impulsive in unexpected and interesting ways, like the blue ox that could decrepit old school bus she bought so we could have our own poor man's Partridge family bus for camping excursions, and yes, it was blue. Years later, after I got out of the Navy, Mom and the family visited me in North Georgia. They took us all on a whitewater rafting trip down the mighty Nantahala, and guided by yours truly, everything went well until it didn't. When at the put-out point with lifeguards all around, Mom took her paddle out of the water, lost her balance, and fell out of the raft. I couldn't go after her. I had to stay in the raft to get my siblings safely ashore before we drifted to the next rapids. And Mom was safe, no less than half a dozen lifeguards responding, throwing out life rings and pulling her out. But she never let me give it down, saying, you left your mother in that river to drown, if with a grin. Her adventures also included mission trips to Eastern Europe, a visit to Allen, Scotland, that I believe resulted in a broken ankle. Uh, numerous trips visiting Lake Tahoe and Charleston and wherever her children end up being, trying out in her 60s to be an airline stewardess. She braved the 9-11 tragedy to make the trip to Norway for Anita and my wedding on September 29th, the first of five trips to Norway during which she would experience Christmas and New Year's, Easter, Labor Day, the 17th of May, uh, Norwegian National Day, and even her 80th birthday. You had to really love her spirit and strength. 
Mom was always playful and wanted to get down on the floor to play with her grandkids. On one of her visits, I came out to find her jumping on the trampoline. She was 75 years old or about there. Jumping on the trampoline with Sarah. On the trip over her 80th birthday, she marched in the May 1st Labor Day parade, pretty rad for a Republican, went snowshoeing in the mountains, and on her 80th birthday, Mom took a swim in the icy waters of Dulles Fjord, with Jen and I looking on, amazed and cold. Yes, Ina could be a lot of fun. Mom was giving and welcoming to Johannes, David, and Christiana, Anita's children from her first marriage accepting them as her own and uh, letting them know they were our family. When it came time to giving, her presents were legendary. Almost never anything new, but rather odds and ends, thrift store, yard sale bits and bobs. Crazy gifts we never quite knew what to do with, but would somehow end up being that one thing needed. Ina desired always to be helpful, sometimes to a hilarious effect. Like when she decided to wax some dull spots on the living room floor, she found some wax in the utility closet she was sure would work, but the label was in Norwegian, Möbelvox, furniture polish. She effectively turned our floors into a very slippery skating rink, and Ina made me hide the wax after that. Mom loved Norway and all things Norwegian. Lefse, brown cheese, sardines, salmon, and oh yes, the chocolate. She was a big hit there with our friends and extended family. Her mother of the groom's speech at her wedding was epic, meaning to say in Norwegian, thank you so much for everything. She said, tusen tak for ingenting, which translates to thanks so much for nothing. <laughs> Ina loved to read and listen to the news, not always to materials or sources I would choose. Her politics and mine were, let's just say, not very aligned. She would often marvel at how well things seemed to run in Norway, how clean and new things seemed, and how well Anita's mother Mildred and her sister Greta were treated by the social system in their dying days. She would say that's fine for Norway, but it would never work in America. Our discussions of these things, yes, politics, would sometimes turn into argument. Mom more than once calling me a rat bastard liberal. <laughs> but over time, as when drilling into stone, with no effect, we accepted we'd never change each other and, well, just to avoid the subject. And returning to that meatloaf, now we manufacture meatloaves by the millions all year long. They are famous in constructing, building houses tall and strong. This is all to say mom was a unique, real, genuine, and sometimes vexing individual who carried the scars of a difficult life. Yes, she passed some of that pain on to her children, and by negative example, we can learn to let go and pass wrongs and work to not let pain limit our lives and growth. But she also passed on a spirit of play perseverance, toughness, a yearning for adventure, the knowledge of the absolute importance of family and good friends, and faith in that higher power. But most of all, she gave us her love in her own way. Yes, mom was a terrible cook, but hey, I grew up to be the one guy in the Navy who never complained about the food. <laughs> for that and for so much more, Mom, I truly thank you. You will be missed. Okay, so... Um, I'm Rebecca, and um, mine won't be that long, so <laughs> I've timed mine, so you didn't time here. You can see it came up to 20 minutes. <laughs> well, you read fast then. Um, I'd like to start uh, with a reading from Proverbs. 
and it goes, sorry, oops, dropped one. Um, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always, tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will. They will watch over you, and when you awake, they will talk to you. My mother's teachings were many. The two that I would like to talk about today are her faith and love. Let's start with Ina's unwavering faith. When growing up in Grafton, North Dakota, Some of my most fond memories are of Crafton Lutheran Church. Every Sunday without fail, we would put on our Sunday best. Side note, I must say, these clothes were only for church. As soon as we got home, we had to take them off. Don't even think about going outside, playing or doing chores because that was a necessity on Sundays. You see, church was a consistent theme in our house, whether with our father or with our mother. And it really did start that passion of faith and love at an early age that got us through a lot growing up. So though we may have been late, come rain, come shine, come brutal snowstorm in Grafton, North Dakota, we were there. It wasn't just Sundays that we were at church. Oh no, there were other activities at that church that we went to. For me, it was organ lessons. Definitely nowhere near my brother's magnificent talents. Um, And we soon soon learned that during those organ lessons, that was definitely not the one for me. I navigated to the piano thereafter, but, you know, pale in comparison again to my dear brother. As we got older, we all moved out of the house. That solid ground of faith really stayed with us and has seen each of my siblings and I through a lot. There have been numerous times throughout my life where I've needed her faith to get me through various hardships. Each and every phone call with my mom and each and every letter she wrote always ended with a biblical verse and it was always specific to whatever it was that I brought forth to her. She may have paraphrased it now and then, but the content was there. She always gave me the feeling and belief that God was at the helm of her ship, in good times and in bad. That is exactly how I want my children to see me. Thank you, Mom. You will always be my pillar of faith in good times and in bad. The name Ina, I felt was such a perfect name for her. She was the only Ina I knew, unique through and through. She was full of spunk, spontaneity, devotion, and an overabundance of love for her family and friends. I now know that my mother's dedication to her faith was born of great love, not just of her love for Jesus, but for her unwavering love for us as her children. There is no greater gift that a mother can give than that of a relationship with Jesus. It is a thing we will always share, so when I spend time with him, I am with her. So randomly, I was listening to some lyrics, and as soon as I heard those lyrics, I instantly thought of my mother, and I had to share them with you today. It's from a a song by Kylie Morgan. Never heard of her prior to hearing this song, so it's okay if you don't know her. They go, Lord, I swear my mama's prayers have saved me more than once. The sky could fall. I'd never know because she would hold it up. Losing sleep each breath she breathed, she did it for us. You gave me your light. Now it's your time to shine. Let your light shine, Vesta. (laughs) 
I'm Rebecca's twin, Betsy, the better one. <laughs> More beautiful. Um, so um, I've been in rehab now for, gosh, um, well, it's almost 90 days. So step nine is when you write amends letters to people that you've hurt along a terrible path that I went down. And um, of course, mom's was my first letter. Um, first off, I miss you so darn much. I'm pretty much lost right now with a big hole in my heart. I'm writing to you because you didn't deserve any of my mischievous crap when I was a kid. I wished I would have been a better daughter to you. I've been so self-centered, self-seeking for 32 years. I have so much shame and guilt, especially to the woman who raised me. The drinking wasn't the problem, Mom. It was me. I put myself here, and now I'm paying the repercussions. I'll never forget. I can't even see it. Um, Mom and I spent some wonderful time on Seabrook Island, and one time it was like for a month, and we just we did everything. We, I'd take her to the beach in those, those wheelchairs with the big tires. <laughs> it's kind of hard walking through sand, but we did it. Mm -hmm. um, that was really fun. Um, I cherish our great memories throughout the years. One that sticks out from childhood, like David said, was taking the Blue Ox to Lake Cavalier playing music on the eight-track tape, eight track. <laughs> and having a great time swimming. Now I have to live life without you, Mom. That's pretty scary to me. I hope you can forgive. You can forgive me, Mom, for all my wrongdoings. And I wish I could have made amends to you before God took you. I know you are with your mother and father and your sister Rita, probably causing havoc knowing you and Rita. <sighs> um, you'll be happy to know that, well, at the time I wrote this was 83 days sober, and um, much more clear-headed and happier. I wish you could see me now, Mom, I know. You would be looking down for me from heaven and smiling, thinking my daughter is really doing it. I've met some great people along the way. The one that stands out, of course, is my sponsor, Tricky. Uh, we've grown so close in just a short amount of time, but she knows everything about me as I read my step five to her. And that took like, I don't know, five hours, four hours. Um, just know, Mom, there's not a single day that goes by without you and my thoughts. I pray for you every morning during awakening and again at night at retirement. I miss you immensely, Mom. <laughs> Love your daughter, Betsy.
thank you so much for the remembrances. And as we remember Einar in our own thoughts and prayers, let us unite our voices in singing a number 287 for all the saints, but stanzas five and six. Please stand as able in body or spirit and remain standing for the gospel proclamation. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord Christ. John chapter 12, beginning with verse 24. Jesus said, truly, truly I say to you, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. But now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Help us, Father, in this morning, in this day, in this time, to be so connected to you that we might become your disciples and the servants of others. Take our lips and speak through them, our minds and think through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire for you. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to thank my siblings and, and Betsy, that was one of the bravest things I've ever heard. Thank you. And on behalf of my family, I just want to say thank you to Father Brown and to Pastor Wismar, who meant so much to my mother over these last many years, and our gratitude is beyond us. To members of extended family who came from the Midwest and Europe, we are so glad and grateful you're here. To our dear friends and family from the South, we, would be, we are humbled that you came all this way for us. To all of Ina's friends from Town Brook House, and gratitude to Michael Zadig for your ministry on the organ. Thank you, dear brother. And to those of us joining on live stream, uh, wherever you are, we are thankful that we're all together today. About a year ago, on a visit to Ina, whom we do call Besta, Besta declared that she and Jennifer and I would go to the local funeral home to meet the director and talk funeral plans, and we did. In fact, I tried to get Besta to buy a Boston Red Sox urn, and she said it was too expensive. <laughs> During that visit, the funeral home director told us, though, that since COVID, there had been fewer funeral homes, uh, funeral, funeral services in their funeral home chapel. And so they said to me that they had converted their funeral chapel, wait for it, into a wedding chapel. 
And I was stunned, like who on earth would get married in a funeral home? I didn't know. But several days later, it hit me. The funeral chapel is perfect because true love, like real love, always requires a death to the self. A good wedding chapel always requires a death to the self. Loving your spouse requires a death to yourself. Loving your children requires death to self. Today of all days, I can't think of another human being who died to self more than a lovingly crazy Norwegian North Dakotan named Besta. And as I look at my family today, I know we all have heard stories of Besta who died to self, and there are so many ways that she did die to self. I remember in 1989, she visited me in Scotland when I was doing my junior year in college over there, and we drove the entire country going from castle to castle with French bread and wine for all of our meals. And when we got to Inverness, Besta ran down a Scottish moor, lost her footing, slipped on the wet grass, and well, we didn't know it at the time, she broke her ankle. But she played through the pain, even went to a Scottish Cayley dance the next night, and only when she got back to Boston did she put her ankle in a cast. That's taken one for the team. But my favorite proof of Besta dying to self came on Thanksgiving Day, 1990. I had just moved to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to begin my first after college job in journalism. I had moved in the late summer and it was to be my last, my first Thanksgiving alone. Besta decided to come and join me for Thanksgiving dinner. I was thrilled about it until she told me she was taking the Greyhound from Boston to Myrtle Beach. I was very successful in begging her to fly. So on Thanksgiving, I went to the bus station where she came in on the bus. Actually, she didn't. A station wagon pulls up, a raggedy old station wagon that looked like it was owned by a hoarder. It was a car filled to the brim with junk, furniture, old toys, and Besta. <laughs> Besta gets out, and I'm like, what on earth are you doing? She informed me that the Greyhound bus had broken down in Conway, South Carolina, about 25 miles away. The bus driver asked everyone to stay on the bus until the next one arrived to bring them the rest of the trip. Besta, of course, gets into an argument with the driver and demands her luggage be pulled from the bus, and off she went walking, like desperate to get to Myrtle Beach. And about a quarter of a mile down the highway with her luggage, she sees a house, knocks on the door, a random family is eating Thanksgiving dinner, but upon hearing Besta's plight and being good Southern people, may may, puts away their food, they drive to Myrtle Beach, God bless them, she uh, comes in that station wagon, gets out, a unbelievable, an unbelievable death to self, that was Besta. Safe to say though, Besta was far from perfect in this dying to self. There were times that she failed to die to self, Case in point, two years ago, I took Besta to church on a Sunday morning. Full disclaimer, Pastor Wismar and Father Brown, it was not a church in Quincy. I took her to a downtown church that shall not be named. We go in, we sit on the very front row so she could hear the entire service. 10 minutes into the sermon, again at a downtown Boston church I shall not name, as the sermon begins, to my terror, Besta, like she is yelling at a football game, actually in the middle of the sermon exclaims, I don't have time for this. This sermon is awful. <laughs> I immediately get under the pew to a fetal position and pray and shed a tear for the poor preacher. As we heard, Besta did struggle with dying to stubbornness, dying to unforgiveness, dying to strange prejudices, even dying to exhaustive political talk. But her love for us, always was a love that placed herself second. And you know, this is actually what makes Christianity different from every other world religion. John chapter 12 makes it clear that this is actually the way Jesus loves us. His love for us would lead him to the cross. In John 12 that you heard Jesus he uses a farming metaphor saying, a kernel of wheat will not become a blade of wheat producing more wheat until it is buried in the ground. The wheat kernel has to die first, be buried, to produce seeds that live and produce wheat. 
Jesus, like that kernel of wheat, had to die with our sin upon himself, be buried to produce the harvest. Why? Adam and Eve, our ancestors, committed that original sin which left you and me with a sin and death problem. Before Adam and Eve ate the apple, apple, all of us were supposed to live sinlessly and forever. But after that sin, we were cursed with our own sin and guilt and shame problem and given imperfect bodies with an expiration date. But on Good Friday, Jesus reversed the curse of that original sin by taking all of our sin upon himself and dying with that sin that we might live new lives now and forever in the next. Jesus, in his resurrection, reversed the curse. I'm reminded of that great highway sign on Sorrow Drive in Boston that says, reverse curve. And after our beloved Red Sox won the World Series in 2004 and broke that Babe Ruth curse, someone spray painted over the sign to say, curse reversed, praise the Lord. But that's what Jesus did for us, the greatest love story in the history of humanity. A hero of mine, Tim Keller, put it this way, the gospel is that Jesus Christ came to earth, lived the life we should have lived, and died the death we should have died, and resurrected so that we would live forever in heaven. Death to self, it's the call of the Christian life. And when we do, I believe we receive the most amazing blessing and joy in return, including the promise of heaven. Heaven, as you heard in Revelation from Victoria, is the place of the no mores. Heaven, no more tears, no more cancer, no more Parkinson's, arthritis, no more falling, crying, or pain, no more unforgivenesses, and no more estrangement. Besta died to herself to raise us and give us that John 12 heavenly heritage. And so it begs the question, what can we take from Besta's legacy and all we've heard today? How can we honor her and this John 12 kind of death to self? I submit to you, the best gift that we could give Besta is to die daily to ourself to live for Jesus. Dying to ourself to live for our marriages and our children. Dying to our sins so that we look, live, love, and learn, and even laugh more like Jesus. Which requires dying to our inability to forgive others. Dying to our inability to receive forgiveness from others. It was Nelson Mandela saying, refusing to forgive is like drinking poison. and waiting for the other person to die. Dying to regret and resentment, dying to anger and generational sin, dying to our own addictions and those things that kill the body, and maybe the biggest death of all, dying to think we can do any of this by ourselves without Jesus and the Holy Spirit who died to give us the strength to die, for us to die to our sin, to live for him. One thing for sure, Besta knew her need for Jesus, as you heard from my sisters and brothers. Besta knew how much she needed Jesus. In fact, every single day in her latter years, we traded Bible messages over, and te over on text message. And if I forgot one day, she would call immediately and say, Al, where is my scripture? Living into Besta's legacy chiefly requires, Lord Jesus, help me live for you by dying to my own self. And so, dear friends, I do believe that that funeral director here in Quincy was right on. Bring on the weddings in the funeral chapel as we die to ourselves. But finally, and on Besta's deathbed, there was one last major death that she needed to die to. And that was the separation of her children upon her death. During her last days, she was in hospice with angels for nurses. And they would tell us, your mother, she's not going because she doesn't want to let go of her family. She is too stubborn to die. And on her last day, as we gathered around her bed, it became clear 
We needed to do last rites in that moment. And it all just kind of came together on FaceTime. There was David from Norway with Anita, Christiana, and Sarah Rose. And there was Betsy in South Carolina. And Rebecca, Jennifer, and I around Besta's bed. By this time, Besta had not opened her eyes for days. The morphine had kind of taken over. Yet supernaturally, and by the grace of God, as we were praying those prayers of last rites, and we got to that line, depart, O Christian soul, out of this world, that it was okay to die to control, that's when Besta opened her eyes. Like she was fully with us. It completely undid me. Like all of a sudden she was right there, right there, and in that moment, it was as if she was communicating through a worn out body. I'm trying to let go. I don't want to. I love you. And that's when each of us said, best that we're okay. It's okay to die and live in heaven and be with Grandpa Christian and Olga and Rita and Terry and Peter and all the saints who have gone before, going into that land of no mores, Then we sang, it is well with my soul. Like it really is okay. And that, my friends, is when Besta died to self one last time. Breathing out her earthly life to breathe in heaven. As a parishioner of mine in Charleston said, Besta is now rocking it in the heavenly big house. Finally today, it reminds me of Billy Graham, who six years ago went to be with Jesus at age 99. Before he died, Billy Graham said these words, someday you will read or someday you will hear that Billy Graham is dead. Don't believe a word of it. I shall be more alive than I am right now. I will only have changed my address. I will have gone into the presence of Jesus. My friends, the best gift we could give Besta, die to that which isn't here, to live for Christ. And in so doing, like that kernel of wheat, we will sprout more on earth and live forever in the heavenly no mores. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you've given us a beautiful recipe to live in that place of no mores. Come, Holy Spirit, and help us to welcome you more into our heart and life that we would live for you, dying to ourselves to receive new life right now and in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing and out of this lift every voice and sing, We're going to sing, It Is Well With My Soul, just like we sang it around her bed, number 188, When Peace Like a River, number 188, Out of the Lift Every Voice.
inside your service leaflet and in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lost Amen. Pastor Wismeyer will now lead us in the praise of the people. Our sister Ina, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Ina and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister Ina was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all saints. Hear us, Lord. Ina was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father, we pray to you for Ina and for all whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy, love, and grace of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Alleluia. Please stand. My dear friends, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. And it is 
good to see so many of you from her, her many activities in the area of Quincy. Uh, in the Episcopal Church, we welcome everyone to God's table. Uh, there will be one station up here at the chancel steps. Uh, we offer both the bread and the wine, but you receive the full sacrament of Jesus uh, if you prefer just to receive the bread. We offer the wine either by drinking from the chalice or by tinting in a small cup. Uh, so there will be two stations. One obviously will have the chalice and one will have the tinting cup. Uh, after the service, uh, the family will greet everyone out here in the, in the hallway going out to the Great Hall uh, where there's a wonderful lunch for you all to enjoy. And then following the lunch, Chinese names will be entombed in the old churchyard. Uh, which is located down by St. John the Baptist. That, that's our original site. And I know is going in a churchyard that, uh, in a tomb that was built in 1727. And she will be surrounded by uh, patriots and loyalists and slaves and Native Americans and a whole host of people because we are all one in God's sight. And it's a wonderful testimony uh, for, for Ida live that out in her own life. Are there other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God as we come to the Lord's table together. Anita and Sara couldn't be here today, but uh, Sara had written a song called Miss You. It was uh, written with, uh, I believe, Mildred, Greta, and Mom in, in mind, sort of an amalgam. And uh, she's graciously allowed me to sing it for you today. And I hope I get through it. She taught me things I never knew She said God is a woman I swear to you Saying the clouds plant the oceans blue You were the mirror I used to look into Ah Oh, I miss you, dreaming of you. Love is not so far away. I close my eyes, it's yesterday. I miss you, and I wish you. All the man that I'd become A little shattered but strong I seem to think only when and lose You made me feel like I had nothing to prove I sit alone in this quiet room After all this time it's you I'm talking to oh. 
I miss you Dreaming of you Love isn't too far away I close my eyes, it's yesterday I miss you And I wish you Saw the man that I become A little shattered but strong I miss you And dreaming of you Love isn't too far away I close my eyes, it's yesterday I miss you And I wish you so the man that I become A little shattered but strong As we come to the great Thanksgiving Mass communion, may all who are called to a place at your table follow in the way that leads to the unending feast of life. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And now as we give you thanks because through Christ you have given your servant Ina and all gathered here the hope of a glorious resurrection so that although death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For to your faithful people, life is changed, not taken away upon our death. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh. Uh... 
your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this. All of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, drink this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying to destroy our death, rising to restore our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Set them apart, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Set us apart, sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Mary, ever blessed. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, as the family of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Amen. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, 
and feed on Jesus in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. David, the body of Christ, the bread of Jennifer, take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Jesus in your heart by faith. This is the body of Christ. Drink the Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Communion is administered. Let us join our voices in singing in the blue hymnal number 325. Let us break bread together.
standing, knowing that we are different for having been here today, let us pray in thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrowing nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we sing together number 207, Jesus Christ is risen today. Commend our sister Ina to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Good rest.
Christ, O Christ, your servant, I know with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are mortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, say, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Ina, with all your saints. Sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Ina, Besta, Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive, Ina, into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Of God Almighty, the peace of God which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.